afternoon y'all it is april 27th and it is a monday and it feels like january 27th man it's 35 degrees out here windy the winds uh 10 to 20 miles per hour all week long it's supposed to be either 10 to 20 or 15 to 25 like doesn't seem like the wind's gonna let up and you know how Virginia is. In Virginia, you're usually up on top of a ridge for a while where the wind's kicking. So, man, I actually had to hike like a mile, just warm up a little bit just to talk to y'all because, man, I my body is just not acclimated for this cold because it's been kind of mild lately. And today, yesterday was chilly for maybe the first hour or two, but not this chilly. This is freaking cold. I mean, it's only a few degrees above freezing so yeah well i guess i'm just gonna have to deal with it so today i'll be going i'm doing it overnight by the way so i got dropped off at uh, lake mountain road um where i got dropped off yesterday but yesterday i went northbound today i'm going southbound and i'm doing it overnight um um tonight so not really sure how many miles i'm gonna get so I'm going to be on this ridge for about three miles and I'm going to drop down into like a gap and then I'm going to slowly climb back up. But at eight miles, there's a water source and that is the last water source for another 10 miles, I think. Something crazy like that. And so the next ridge I'll be on goes forever. So you're on top of the ridge forever. And there's a bunch of places to camp out up there. There's one at... The best spot was like 11 and a half um, and then there's one at 12 and a half and then there's one at like 14 um, and then there's a really a good camp spot with a spring which is the next water at like almost 19 I think it's 18.8 .8. so I doubt I'm gonna even make that for sure because it's like nine o'clock now um, it took takes uh, it takes us an hour to drive here, but after this, once I get this section done, the drive will be like 20 minutes, so it won't be bad. Um, yeah, so I'm going to have to carry water for miles today. There's just no other way to do it. So when I get to that water source, I'm probably just going to camel up, drink as much water as I can until I feel like I'm going to throw up, and then carry as much as I can. And along the way, if I see stray, because it's been raining a lot, if I see like stray puddles and stuff, I might collect more. And um, I'm, I'm hoping I can get to that 14 mile one today. Um, and that'll make, it'll make it like a 12 or 13 tomorrow or 12, I think. Um, so we'll see what happens. Anyways, let, I'm going to keep on hiking so I can get warmed up again and I will get back with y'all. All right.
Hey y'all, so I've hiked about four miles so far and the sun, the sun did come out pretty good for like maybe 15 minutes, but now it's kind of under the clouds again. So when I first got dropped off that ridge, it's just like, it's like Virginia. I felt like I was in Virginia again. It's just mossy rocks, slippery rocks, and they're all over the place and all you're doing, you're your feet are always crooked, sideways, slipping off rocks. So it was pretty slow going. It was like, I don't know, not the funnest hike in the world, that's for sure. So then I um, dropped down and I went by a shelter. I saw some people in it, so I walked by it. There were three through hikers. Um, one guy's name was Blueberry. One guy's name was Achilles. Man, I can't remember the other guy's name. But anyway, so we were talking and they were, um, they were, you could tell they were kind of miserable. One guy was in his sleeping bag and the reason is it's really, it got really cool today. It's still pretty cool and it's been pretty mild and it's just lately it's been really overcast and kind of dreary and then the cold. So I think they were just, you know, they were talking about how they were like, you know, I think they weren't super happy because of the weather, um, and also because of what's been going on. So, of course, we got into the conversation about the ATC. And that Blueberry guy's like, he's just like, I don't give a shit. He's like, as soon as the ATC said that, that they're not going to recognize his hike. He's like, all three of them said they threw their blue tags away. He's like, they're, Blueberry's like, I got rid of my tag. As soon as they said, I got rid of them. He's like, I don't care about them. He's like, I'm not out here for them. And, um, and that seems to be the general consensus among the people who are still out here. Um, so yeah, man, I don't, <laughs> man, the ATC messed up big time when they did that. They should have, I understand them saying, recommending, saying, Hey, because when that's, when it was first going on, there was a lot of like misinformation and, it, and there shouldn't have been, cause no one really knew it or understood it. And so there was just a lot of hype and maybe they were being careful, but I just don't think so. I think there was other things involved in it, but they should have just recommended people not through hike and left it at that. But then when they went ahead and said, we're not going to acknowledge your through hike, I'm telling you, they lost so much support just from doing that bad, bad management decision. No matter how you feel about that, that was a bad management decision because it's not for them to say. Um, and another thing, I never mentioned this. When I was in Maryland, I passed two ridge runners who were doing hiking guides. They had 10 people with them, so that was 12 altogether, which is way too much on the trail, which the ATC frowns about, but they're doing hiking guides. And another thing, since when do ridge runners do hiking guides? And and is the ATC making money off that? I didn't even ask them if it was paid or not. All I know is when they all came down um, at that like Civil War park, there was two ATC vans there waiting for them. So I doubt it was free, but it may have been. But either way, ridge runners, that's not their job. That's not in their job description to do hiking guides. Um, unless they just change it, which, um, like I said... And, th and so I passed four more. I passed two other through hikers, two dudes who were just hiking by themselves. And then I just passed a couple. But all of, I didn't really talk to any of them that long. I just said, hey, hey. But all of them just looked dejected and not like they were having fun, which it's weird. I, want, I don't know if it's the weather or what, but it's weird. Just all of them just seem kind of like melancholy, you know? So I don't know what's going on. It might just be the weather and also just everything that's going on. This is just an abnormal through hike. All right, my camera cut out on me for some reason. Um, so what I was saying is, I was talking about this just being an abnormal through hike for those through hikers. Wow, the sun just came back out. Man, I hope it stays out. But what I was gonna say is so I have, um, so I'll be hiking a little bit uh, I think in two miles, there's another shelter. And then after that shelter, I'll start climbing up to that uh, ridge line. And then um, it's a mile after that, it's the next water source where I'm going to have to get water and carry it to wherever I decide to camp. 
So yeah, it is what it is. Sometimes you got to do that. You either got to stop early or carry water. Or go really, really far, which I'm not really going to try to do with my knee. Yep. All right, well, I'm going to keep on hiking southbound, and I will get back with y'all. All right. Hey y'all, so I just got um, all my water filled up, so I chug like a liter and a half of water and I feel like I'm going to throw up water, and I filled up both my bottles, and if you can see, I have my water bag, I don't know if you can see it, it's back here in the back, and that's full, and I think that holds three liters, so... So I have five liters of water and I'm going uphill. So I'm going to be carrying that. The, the, the closest camp spot is 3.4 miles from here. So at, at least the least I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to carry it 3.4 miles, which is ridiculous. This water source is the last water source for 10 miles. There's no more water for it's actually 10.4 miles and there's no more water. So I'm just going to be climbing this and I'll be on this ridge, be climbing this way and it's just a ridge and it's dry and at the end of the ridge is a camp spot with a spring. Other than that, there's no water. So I'm going to have to just hike slow and I'm hoping it's not going to be hard on my knees. Um, I think it's like 1.30 right now. So I don't know. I think I might end up just going to that spot that's 11 and a half or it's 11.8 but it's not a lot of miles but i don't know we'll see we'll see how i feel when i get there i just know carrying all this water that long it's just gonna be ridiculous so when i was down at the shelter down there <clears throat> i met a mom and daughter and it's this girl named kaleidoscope and she has a vlog but it's not her channel but i think i saw like her intro video and so I was talking to them, and they both didn't get off. And you could tell the mom kind of had a chip on her shoulder. And like I said, all the hikers I've been passing, they all kind of have, like, these chips on their shoulder. So I started talking to them, um, and they're like, no, we didn't get off. And then um, she started telling me, she goes, I don't, I don't think this thing was ever real. I think it was overhyped, and I think it's just this, like, respiratory illness that our government used to use a power play and they fear mongered everyone. And um, she, and then she said it, she goes, fear is the best way to control the masses. And she's right. And it's funny how everyone out here feels that way, but it makes sense. That's why they stayed out here and the other people left. 
I'm not saying the other people were wrong to leave because even me, I would, I would doubt myself because of how much they were pushing this narrative about how, hor- how contagious this thing and how deadly it is. And now we're finding out every day, every day that it's nothing. It's nothing. It's a little bit worse than the flu. That's it. Um, and so she was just like, and she was just like, it burns me up that they would do something like this. And, and it burns me up too, but it does not surprise me at all, man. And, um, like I said, I'm not saying any of the people who got off, cause I understand like you, a lot of us just weren't sure, man. We just were like, and a lot of people were like, you know what? I want to get that certificate. I want the ATC to recognize my through hike. So I'll just get off. And I don't know. I just think there's two people in this world. <clears throat> there's people who are awake and see through all this. And then there's the sheep, like I said. And there's still people, after all the stuff we know now, the media is still like acting like this thing is a crazy, crazy, horrible, contagious, deadly virus. And it's not. And the media needs to stop. And we need to hold the media accountable. They are just out of control, man. And But here's the thing. Those people, like the sheep, those if, if it wasn't for those people, the media and the government would have no power. Those people are the ones who give them all that power. If it wasn't for those sheep, they wouldn't have the power. And that's why people are like, yeah, yeah, well, we're divided and, and you know, we need to come together. But the truth is, a lot of us see it that way. We're like, well, I see those people as the problem because they're the ones, without those people, the government media wouldn't have any power. No one would, would believe it. But they they are and they sit at their homes and they watch that news and they believe it and they think they're being good um patriots like there's this i think it's a burger king commercials and they called it cow couch couch potatriots couch potatriots and like the couch comes up and they're all like this laying on their couch at their houses i mean that is a sick commercial dude couch potri I can't even say it. You're not, listen, you're not a hero and you are not a patriot just because you're locking yourself in your house and hiding from the boogeyman. I've said this before. You're not. (laughs) Get over yourselves. You're not. You're just scared little people. That's all you are. And I know hardly any of these people are watching my video. And I know I shouldn't even be saying this stuff, but... I don't know, man. I just think it's just insane and it just, it really bothers me. And I just, man, I just, like I said, I'm just, I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. But anyways, and I wouldn't even have been thinking about it if I hadn't passed all those through hikers who were all saying the same thing. And that's all anyone can talk about out here because they're, you know, they're upset that that this was such a con job. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them. I'm upset too. <sighs> Enough of that. Anyways, I'm going to keep on hiking. I got, like I said, I got at least 3.4 to do uphill. And um, yeah, I will get back with y'all. All right.
Hey y'all, so I made it to that camp spot. Um, this is it, if you can see. It's an unofficial camp spot, and it's kind of on top of this ridge. You can tell it's a really, really wide ridge. Um, there's a bunch of like sporadic camp spots all up on here. Um, but all the reviews and gut hooks said that this was the best one. And I believe it because I passed two um, when I was coming here and they just the spots were all sloped and rocky and I don't even know how people tent there. I mean, you could hammock for sure. Um, but I mean, there's some really good flat spots here. There's some over there. Um, really nice one there where I'm standing. I'm going to put my tent and then there's a couple back there. So it's a pretty decent camp spots. So, so as soon as I got all that water and started hiking up the, to the ridge, I mean, I could feel my knee just instantly. It's, that's the biggest thing that's really affecting my knee is the weight. I notice the less weight I have on it, the better I hike and the less painful it is. Like I hiked pretty decent the whole way to where the water was, but as soon as I got all that water, um, and start climbing. I mean, I felt it 100%. So, man, I don't know. This injury is messing me up. And today's just been, I don't know. It's just been kind of an annoying day. At least the sun came out, so that's a bonus. But the air temp is like that temp where if you try to wear like a mid-layer or something, it gets too hot. And if you take it off, it's too cool. Like, you just can't find that balance. And... Carrying the water and um, my knee hiking up here, I was hiking so, so slow. Um, so I had to end up putting on my raincoat just to stay warm because it's pretty chilly today. I don't know why. It's been really mild lately. But anyways, yeah, so I'm just going to stay here and hopefully tomorrow I'll feel better. If the spot I was getting at, so I was going to go to this... Um, like Parisburg, it's parking area, and it's 15.6 from here. So I'm going to try to shoot for it tomorrow. There's not a whole lot of climbing to do. I'll mostly just be on a ridge going like this. But like I said, today I was on these ridges, and it may not look bad on the profile map, but when you get on it, there's just rocks and roots, and it's like sideways on the it'll be like sideways on the ridge and it just does this and so you're constantly going up and down up so i don't know it's kind of like i don't know it gets you after a while but if not like i said there's a couple spots to bail out early there's a 11 and a half and then there's a 13.8 i think that i can bail out if i have to um but hopefully i'll be able to do it we'll see but anyways, I am going to put my tent up and get all my stuff situated and I will get back with y'all. All right.
All right, that's it for today. I will talk with you all in the morning. All right.